Are you conducting AQL sampling inspections? And if so, do you understand the three defect types, minor, major, and critical? Now, understanding these defect types and the differences between them is crucial because misunderstanding them can lead to you misinterpreting your inspection results. And that can lead to unexpected poor quality down the line. Okay, and so that's why we want to help you understand the difference between them and how to make sure that you have a good defect list. When you conduct an inspection on your product, your mission is to look for defects. And so that means, for example, if you are inspecting high chairs, for, you know, baby high chairs, and they have wooden legs, and you look at the, the wooden legs and you're finding that they're kind of uneven the, and the high chair is wobbling, okay, well, that is a defect and you wanna find that and if there are too many defects, then the inspection fails, right? But not all defects are the same. Some are minor, some are major, and some are critical. So let's start with minor defects to explain those. A minor defect is one that is a deviation from your specifications but it's one that does not make the item likely to be returned and it doesn't make the item unsaleable. So say for example, your item is a wooden picture frame and one of the frames has a small scratch on the back of the picture frame. Okay, so if you're a consumer and you're in a retail store, you're gonna pick up that picture frame and, and that small scratch on the back is not gonna make you say, oh, I need to put this to the side and take the one behind it. If you receive that Amazon delivery or whatever, then you are not going to say, oh, it has a small scratch on the back, so I need to return it. That small scratch doesn't affect the usability of the item and it doesn't affect the saleability of the item. It's not ideal to have scratches on your picture frame, but it's not a major defect. It is a minor defect. Okay, so major defects. This is the type of defect that is likely to cause the buyer to return the item or to make it unsaleable in the first place. So, for example, we talked about that picture frame and it had a small scratch on the back of the frame and that was minor. Well, now imagine that same picture frame, but it has a big scratch right across the front of the picture frame. And so when someone is looking at it on the wall, they're gonna see that scratch right there. That affects the usability or the functionality of the item. Another example would be a ceramic mug with a broken or cracked handle, or an item that is supposed to be one color and it doesn't match the color of the other items in a set. So these are things that affect the saleability of the item and make it likely to be returned. That is a major defect. That brings us now to critical defects. A critical defect is a deviation that is typically safety related or it could just be something that you have zero tolerance for. So for example, if you have an electrical item and that item has stray current, it could shock someone, or coming back to the wooden picture frame, now imagine that the picture frame has splinters on it that could draw someone's blood. So critical defects are typically safety related and they could lead to injury or just things that you absolutely cannot tolerate. Recently, I talked to Andy Church, the founder of Insight Quality, and we talked about how to develop a defect list. How do you develop a defect list? As your inspection service provider, 
we can help you create one. But as the buyer, you often know your product the best. You can use return data, customer comments, look at your product specification and your test report to help determine what the tolerances of certain elements of your item should be. If you're purchasing a picture frame from a factory at a five by seven, what is the tolerance you're willing to accept? A quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch out of measurement. You know, you, you wouldn't want a buyer of a picture frame to have a five by seven frame and the frame be six by four and the picture wouldn't fit. So it's important to look at all elements of your product, the sizes, the color, the use, the compliance requirements, and incorporate those elements into your defect list. So let's hear from him about the most important thing to understand. Thanks. What is the most important thing to remember about defect classification? Subjectivity. Many defects can be reviewed by three different people and have three different results. So it's very important to identify tolerances, what is a minor, what is a major, and what would be a critical. A one-inch scratch on the front of a picture frame would absolutely be a major. Nobody wants to look at a picture of their loved ones through a scratch. That same scratch size scratch on the back of a picture frame would be a minor defect. So identifying a scratch and its location could remove subjectivity at the point of inspection. So it's important to look at each defect that is listed and identify whether it's a major, minor, or critical. Thanks for joining me today to talk about AQL defect classification. I hope it was helpful. Be sure to give us a like, be sure to subscribe for more videos. And if you have more questions about AQL sampling, you can reach out to us or download our free guide, AQL Sampling 101, which is available on our website. If you want to conduct your own inspections with us, reach out about that as well and tell us about your product, your suppliers, your situation, and we'd be happy to help you out. So until next time, have a great day or evening.